Well, howdy. It is Tuesday, March 24th, 2020. This would be day, whatever, six, seven, eight of staying, distancing, I guess is the term. Um, a few of you have asked about <clears throat> some of these guitars. I love guitars. I've been playing the guitar, oh, since I was nine or ten, eight or nine. Um, sometimes, you know, seriously, sometimes very casually. And there have been moments through my life where guitar has been a big priority. And, you know, as I got married and career-oriented, it kind of took a back seat. But the last few years, thanks to my good friend, uh, Philip Stiebel, um, he has rekindled my interest in guitars and has actually inspired me to play a lot over the last couple of years. And uh, he developed a, an interest for me with the electric side. I've always been an acoustic guy. And this particular guitar, this is a 1971 Yamaha FG300. Um, and it's got a story. I love guitars with a story, uh, or guitars whose history I'm aware of. And the acoustics are more like that for me than these electrics behind me. Um, just because these are all new, um, meaning I purchased them brand new from stores or dealers. Um, but this guitar was actually the very first guitar, the first real guitar that I ever owned. And I bought it in 1971. It was probably back then 150, 200 bucks, something like that. Um, and it's a beautiful dreadnought style acoustic guitar, uh, still kind of uh, accepted as Yamaha's uh, best acoustic guitar era. This has what's called a red label on the inside, um, and that indicates that it came from Yamaha's Japanese factory. Um, but the cool thing about this guitar, my dream guitar, probably six months after getting this thing, I was, I don't know, 17, 18 years old. Um, and my dream guitar had always been a Martin, uh, which is a US made guitar made in Nazareth, PA. But they were ridiculously expensive. So I bought this Yamaha. And absolutely loved it. A couple of years later, I decided to get a Martin D35. Uh, and I sold everything I had. I was at Ohio University going to college. And I sold everything I had that was sellable, which wasn't much, a stereo, some things like that. And um, I called a shop in Cleveland, Ohio called De Fiori's Music. Uh, to order the Martin, and they said it would be about 90 days by the time they contacted the factory and it was finished or made or whatever. It wasn't a custom build. Um, but about 90 days later, they called and to let me know that my guitar was in. So I took this, this Yamaha, and all the cash I had to my name, and I drove to Cleveland, which was three and a half, four hours from Athens, to pick up my Martin. I didn't know what they would give me for this, but at the end of the deal, they took this guitar and all the cash I had and gave me my brand new Martin D35 and 
I had enough left over to buy a Guild Electric Sidewinder, I believe it was, and a great big gigantic trainer amplifier. Gigantic cabinet amp. I can barely fit it in my 1962 Buick LeSabre. Um, so I got rid of this guitar. I traded it in on my dream guitar. Uh, the cool thing about this guitar is that about eight months ago, But maybe mm -hmm. I should leave it on. I don't know which is better for it. I don't want it to disintegrate. Well, it looks like copper. Yeah. And that won't disintegrate. That'll just discolor. It'll. Uh... But you do have something? Because well, you can use. There's stones in here, and I don't want the stones to get wrecked either right. from coloring or from chemical cleaner. Yeah. And I don't know. I would use a metal cleaner, but it's going to be a pain in the ass because it's a tiny little. You know, metal. Does that look okay to you? Oh, like yeah, it's, it's not, not rusting, it's just patinaed. And. Okay. Yeah, I think I'll it's okay. Yeah. Okay. I think you're alright. eight months ago I decided to try to find this guitar. I always loved it. I always loved the way it played. Got a beautiful thin neck and just a great clean crisp warm sound. So I called the Fiori's and apparently they got out of the retail business and got into guitar manufacturing. But they the fellow I spoke with advised me that they still had a ton of paperwork down in the basement and if I give him a couple of weeks he'd go see if he could find my paperwork. I had to try to get the serial number because I didn't keep any of that. So a few weeks later I got a call from him and he found the paperwork. So we had a serial number. He turned me over to Yamaha whom I contacted and they offered the same assistance um, and they said, you know, we'll try to figure out who last registered that serial number and the trail may end there or that may be the end of it. So a few weeks later I received a call from Yamaha and they told me that
So they gave me the last known person that they had on record. He happened to be in Chicago. And the guitar had apparently gone from Cleveland to Houston to Philly to somewhere else, and it ended up in Chicago. And they were kind enough to share the guy's phone number. I called him. And he picked up. And I explained what I was trying to find. And he said, well, it's amazing you called because he was getting ready to move to Nashville and he was selling his guitars. But he still had this one. So I told him I'd love to buy it. He quoted me a price. I agreed. And the next day, I met him at a Starbucks on the north side of Chicago to get my old Yamaha guitar back. And he pulled it out in an old gig bag and he, it was snowing like a son of a bitch and he pulled it out of the back seat and we got into my truck and he opened up the gig bag and he said, are you sure this is yours? And there's a ding right here, right there. And I said, yep, that's mine. Uh, a bong got dropped on that guitar at a dorm at Ohio University and made that mark. So this is my original 1971 Yamaha FG300. And it was like finding an old long lost love. I absolutely love playing it. Um, it's just got a really sweet action, very nice sound. This is the Martin D35. This is a 1973. And this thing has been through thick and thin. Uh, you may not be able to hear it, but it's got uh, a much richer deeper, warmer sound than the Yamaha. And that's sort of a trademark of the Martins. Um, big, full body sound. This is a D35 model. And uh, you know, a fairly simple guitar from a cosmetic standpoint. No fancy inlays or crazy shit like that. You can get them that way. I believe this guitar, when I bought it, was 600 and some odd dollars. And I don't know what the value of it is today, but you can buy Martin guitars for anywhere from several hundred dollars to several hundred thousand dollars, depending upon who owned it.
beautiful guitar to play. The neck is like just glass. Uh, it can be a very quiet guitar or a very loud guitar. Um, That's the Martin. I'm going to go let the dogs out. <laughs>